wannan shine gidan dambe sansanin jarumai sunana isa wannan kuma shine labari na ina ku zo me duburi je ma da dan muka zo tare da yaya na daru ube ne sasa fi zamu fara training why must i fight when the way why are you happening horror kid we give him a real taste of ariwa feast mala eh now kase mu ba kuwa dan dai so please be careful ko wanda irin wahala ne a shirye nake da location i challenge you to them be wato zan ga maka gaskiya kuma zan tabbatar maka cewa yanda nake san mace me zai yi na wani karo na farko a rayuwa ta zan yi fada akan abin da na imani akai abu ne mai wahala a wajen ka ko da zan mutu ne akan hakan fada mu ba Hello Nigeria, hello Africa. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Today we have another exciting package for you and um, as we always do on the program by the way and uh, I would implore you to um, spend the next 45 minutes prepared to hear um, insightful discussions about you know um, filming in the sports uh, business space you know uh, so Today, we're going to be talking about sports and storytelling. Basically, storytelling of film meeting the sports um, industry, all right? Stories tell, storytelling is one of the ways that, um, you know, fans get to bond with their, with their favorite stars. You know, storytelling is how all of us get emotionally attached to a lot of things in life, to our youth, to, our, to the future, when we imagine what's going to happen. All right, so when you bring that into sports, you can then start to talk about the stories of the favorite stars that you see on television. And, you know, these stories then endear you to, this, to these stars, as well as the, the individual sports that your favorite uh, stars uh, participate in. Today, we're going to be talking about fil filming in, 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 in the sports industry, f sports films, basically. And uh, we're going to be showing you a platform that... Um, that exposes you know sports films to the world you know so if you're a producer of, of movies for instance and you want to do um, sports a sports themed um, movie you know this is one platform where you can sell what you have to do to the rest of the world now joining us today from nairobi or from mombasa she'll tell us um, herself when when the program gets on the way is Flores Nduta. She is the director and um, head juror of this year's Kenya International Sports Film Festival. Now, this Kenya International Sports F Film Festival is where you can go and exhibit what you have done, what you, ca you can go and show what you have done in the, in the uh, sports film industry. And also joining her will be Mr. Ibitayo Ibikunle, who is a producer of one of the films that we're going to see this year at the Kenyan Sports, uh, International Sports Film Festival. Ayo joins us from the UK today, and he's going to be talking about his film, Gidan Dambe, which is um, centered around um, uh, the, the Dambe sport that's most popular in northern Nigeria. All right? So I'm going to give you guys, as is the tradition of this program. We're going to go on a very short break uh, to give you guys a minute to stretch your legs, to get some water and invite a friend or two to join you in this discussion because what you're going to hear in the next 45 minutes could change your view about the sports industry and it could open an opportunity for or two for you or your organization in the sports business space. We'll be back in a minute and don't go away. So hello there, you're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Urufo Ezaga. You're watching Plus TV Africa and we're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. Today, as I've said already, joining us will be Florence Duta from Kenya and Ibitayo um, 
Ibitayo Ibikunle, and we're going to be talking about sports and film. All right. Hello, Florence. How are you? Jambo, Jambo from Nairobi, Kenya. Jambo. And um, Ibita, Ibita, do you speak Swahili as well? Nope, I wish. Um, the only thing I can say is hello, Ekuileo, and um, Bawani. Oh, what? Ah, okay, so that, <laughs> that's Yoruba. And to you, I say, um, you're both welcome to the program. It's nice flavor. We have the Kenyan flavor, or the Kiswahili flavor, and then we have the Yoruba yeah. flavor um, as well. Okay, so... Thank you. Florence, tell us about the Kenyan International Film um, International Sports Film Festival. You know, um, this is the seventh edition, if I understand correctly. Uh, what do you yes. guys do? What, it is, what is it about? Um, and, you know, why should we all be interested in what you're doing? So basically, we realized that there was um, a big gap in the market on, on storytelling or mm. in the film industry. And story tell, telling stories about our sports uh, men and women is something that we really need to to tell because we have a generation that is younger than us that needs to understand or know who are their sports and film. I mean, their sports, uh, um, small, the sportsmen and women, you know, before them and why they mean so much. However, this story started with my chairman, Mr. Asif Karim, who is a four generation Indian. Um, uh, uh, now, they, in fact, they're actually part of Kenya. They're the 40, 44th tribe. But when his family arrived at the Mombasa coast, they were sportsmen and women. So basically, the, that, the four generations coming down to himself are people who really participated in sports. Asif Karim has been a team captain for our cricket team. And um, he realized he, he has never told his story. So he found, uh, he actually, how he found out about the sports film fast festivals is when he went to India. And he found a sports film festival there. And he realized, how come we do not have our own in Africa? Mm. So we started the Kenya International Sports Film Festival platform as a first Kenyan or African film festival owned by Kenyans for sports and film. And that is how we came about. Okay, so how has the reception been since you started? I know, I, by the way, I know Karim's uh, Asif's story um, yes. and, and his brilliant Cricket World Cup performance in 20, 2003, I, I, I think. Correct. Yeah? Yeah. You know, and, and, mm. and though I know they, had, they did something about the, the Karim family in, in Kenya as well. Yeah. Exactly. So what has the reception been like, you know, uh, since you started? Well, um, in the first year, we had 1,223 entries. Wow. And people were not really grasping what is this all about. So we kept on having to, in the terms and conditions, putting it clearly what we actually need. We need sports-oriented films, whether they're, in, uh, whether they're student films, feature films, short documentaries, animations, you know, across the board. But it has to be about sports. So from there, coming to this year, where we had 1,490 films, I can tell you the majority of those films were sports-oriented, which has made me tremendously proud. Being an actor, being a filmmaker, um, I totally was blown away, especially by Africa. I mean, it has grown so much in Africa to tell those kind of stories. And people like Tayo here really impressed me by taking us back to that we had sports, we have our original sports from where our ancestors started. And telling that story in that unique way was pretty impressive. Okay, and that brings me to Tayo. Thanks for helping me introduce him um, to, to <laughs> the properly. Okay, so Tayo, I'll tell you something, right? One yes. of the things I've always told people is, is that, you know, I have never seen a Nollywood movie that has a sports theme, right? And mm -hmm. I always used to say that, look, if you watch the American movies, for instance, if you watch 20 of their movies, at least you'd see a sports scene or a exactly. sports frame in at least 90, 95% of those movies to show you how integrated sports is to their civilization. So, I mean, you can imagine my, my surprise when I found out that you were, you were, you were going to be a part of the Kenyan um, um, film festival, the sports film festival. And, and you had something to do uh, that's sports related. 
how did you come by this? You know, how did you get introduced to this whole idea of um, yes. sp um, storytelling in sports? Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Tayo, and um, I think for me it was um, I just love to tell stories that um, are unique, and I personally, as a filmmaker, um, the kind of stories I tell are like stories. I like to amplify voices. So um, I feel like I've been following Dambi for more than four or five years. Um, but then I used to live in Lagos and there was not a lot of Dambi happening. So um, luckily I got, a, there was an opportunity to be in Abuja for like six months. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really found, you know, the love for Dambi. So mm -hmm. I would go every weekend to watch, I'd go to Nasara, I would just sit there and watch people like fight. Mm -hmm. And it just used to be fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then I used to ask myself like, how come we've not seen this on a big screen? You know, mm -hmm. I feel like, um, this fight has been portrayed as, you know, something that just happens in a corner somewhere. It's like it, it has its own audience. Mm. And um, and I feel like Nollywood filmmaking needs to like really get a lot of stories from authentic stories. Uh, we have a lot of grassroots stories that are not being told. Mm. So that was what started the process of I wanted to do a documentary, but I realized that that would be like preaching to the choir. Mm. And um, so I looked for a medium where I can actually like show you um the dambi sports mm -hmm. because what, what, what also, i also realized was that a lot of people were now coming from mm -hmm. abroad to tell these stories mm -hmm. uh, it means that it was getting a lot of international operations if you go on youtube and you see channels like um i think they're called dambi warriors they really made a thing out of the dambi fights they put their fights up on on youtube but you can see like people outside really want to know what dambi is about because it's a different sport and um it's very very original so I tapped into the storytelling bit. Um, so why we don't have a lot of film? Yeah, so I was saying, um, so that was what inspired me. I just really wanted to tell a story that was original. And I felt like the only way to do that was to mix spots and put some level of drama, which people are used to. Mm. People don't want to sit down and just watch damn big fights from beginning to the end. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as a filmmaker, I had to like, you know, use the medium of storytelling, which is like create characters that are relatable, um, put them against the backdrop of what everybody can relate to um there's family there's love there's brotherhood and there's the issue of like you know being you know um what's the word being displaced uh okay you know i'm just gonna change locations uh, and i'll continue this in a second if that's okay that's fine all right so let, let's come to florence uh, again florence you're providing a platform for the likes of um Ibukunle, uh, to sorry tire that is to to um, tell their stories, you know. So, what has been again the reception like from the African filmmakers, you know? Because um, there's 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 not a lot that we have done in that genre, in, in that genre, yeah, in African film. You know, what what was the reception like from specifically now from the Afri I know you're getting entries from around the world, but from the African filmmaker, what what has been the reception like? All, all I can just say to you, first of all, I must say kudos to the Nigerian filmmakers. Mm. They submitted 52. Wow. 52 movies. And yeah. it has been, it's like so hard to choose yeah. because the quality of the films are amazing. The stories are amazing. So it has mm. been really pleasing, I can say, mm. to see Nigeria coming so strong with 52 movies. Mm. Africa has also done very, very well. Okay. And I can tell you quite a number are from Africa. I am very, very impressed. However, we still need to continue because when we have countries like Iran and Iraq, not Iraq, Iran and Afghanistan and those countries submitting about way over 150 films, we have still a way to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but impressively, Africa has really come in very strong, very strong. You know, as a sports fan, I know that there, there, there's a plethora of, of, of um, movie subjects. If, if, um, you know, if, if my language is right, please correct me. But then we've had yeah. giants on the African continent, guys like George Ware, who became uh, the, the, the only guy to have been voted the world, the only African to have won the World Footballer of the Year award. We've had maestros in the Nigerian sport like JJ Okocha, Kanu Wako. You know, in Egypt we've had uh, Abu Treka. You know, we've had Solomon, uh, Samuel Eto, and so many other uh, major stars in world sport. And I don't see that anybody has done anything about 
these guys. I, I think a lot of fans might be interested in watching that, not just here in Africa, but globally. You know, so is this the sort of thing that you hopefully want to see happen um, in you're, the future? You are so right. You are so right. These icons need to tell their stories. Their mm. fans need to tell their stories. Some of the movies that we have submitted, and I hope you'll be able to watch um, I've sent you the, the, the program. Mm. Some of these stories actually are, some of them have covered that. Mm. But it is to, for us to encourage through our platform all these people to document their stories for their fans. Mm. It's okay. very important. Yeah, you see, like they say, stories, with stories you can, you can actually capture. You know, you know, I like the way these guys from the West do it. They tell this story, they put it out there, and all of us, in the rest of the in the other parts of the world get enchanted by these stories and we get sucked into uh, their cultures their 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 civilizations yeah. their you know, ways of doing things and, and you know so that's the power of the storyteller and i'm happy to see that you guys are beginning to embrace that uh, we are creating this platform where uh, the, the likes of tayo can can um, can you. tell their stories all right but what about what about kenya itself you know um, what do you benefit from? First, what sort of stories do, do, do you have from your filmmakers? Have you had uh, your own filmmaker, filmmakers tell their stories? That's number one. And number two, how does this benefit um, your industry in Kenya, both the sports industry and the film industry? So I'll take the first, the second question. Mm. Um, basically, we have put all the eyes on Kenya mm. internationally mm. because there are other sports film festivals that actually um, have been running for very, very many years but okay. not have not done the impact that we have done. Okay. That we are able to start being recognized by bodies like the International Olympics Committee okay. who we are now very close with. Okay. And we work very closely together. So we have put Kenya on the map, that is for sure. Mm. And um, what was the first question again? The other one about the filmmaking in Kenya. I mean, how has this inspired sports films in Kenya? Oh, yeah, it's changed. Most of the producers, in fact, this year, I was so surprised to see so many entries from Kenya, sports-oriented, sports because we're all telling the, the normal genres, you know. And now they've seen something more interesting to tell. And now we have seen entries from Kenya, which are very interesting, and I'm sure you'll see them screened on our social media platforms. Okay, so... Let's let if I'm listening to watching this program, I'm thinking, what sort of genre uh, is is um, can I get into when it comes to sports? Can I do romantic stories around sports? Can I do yeah, documentary? If, if there's a story what exactly in there, do you have? Uh, what 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 can, what's the what's the scope? What's the length that they can get to? You can get everything. We have feature films like what Tayo has just done. Okay. So some are even romantic and otherwise I really don't want to go too far because I'm the head juror, I'll be spilling the tea. <laughs> and I know you want to drink that tea, so I'm not giving you that tea. <laughs> Kenya is a, is a tea manufacturing country. I yeah. am not giving you our tea. Okay, okay. But, but yes, we have feature films like what Taya has done. We have um, amazing, amazing animation. Okay. That I, I actually am silly gog smacked by that because it's just fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. And there's a mixture of both amazing short films, short documentaries. So, yeah, we have a lot of content for the audience. It basically, we've made sure that our audience around the world, young and old, will be able to watch this content. Okay, so Tayo, tell us, you see, Dem Dambe, I'm, I'm particularly interested in, in what you're doing with Dambe because it's such a powerful sport, sport in northern Nigeria. It's so popular, right? Yet here we are in Nigeria and people look at us and they think we're a one nation sport. You know, everybody talks football, 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 football. And then you come up with this Dambe mm. thing, you know. And I think, it's, I think it's going to be wild in northern Nigeria when you, when you, when you uh, release it. I don't know if you've done so already, you know. What, what do you, when in, in the process of making this film, right, what did you get from 
the feelers um, about what you're doing, you know, how you think this is going to impact the region and promote this sport. Okay. Yes, so while I was making the film, I actually learned a lot because um, that was my first time making a film in the North. I don't speak Hausa. Um, it was a bit ambitious because I wrote it in English and then I, had to, I struggled with directing my actors because I didn't understand Hausa. I couldn't speak it. But if there's one thing I learned from filming in the north is that the northern people are so warm yeah. you basically lived in their space for like a week Sunset. we were eating with them they were very open they were very friendly most of the people in the film um half of them were not trained actors they're just first time people that are i basically recruited on the film you know so they're not i wanted to make a film that was very true to the to the community so we filmed in a proper um gita dambi gita dambi means house of dambi Okay. Um, so we filmed in the proper house of Dambi. Um, we spoke, we made sure that the guys, that the Dambi fighters featured in the film, um, most of the fighters were Dambi fighters. They had not done any acting in their lives. Um, particularly, there's a boy called um, Small. He was uh, one of the characters on the film. Has no business acting, but was a fantastic actor. So what I realized is that there are a lot of talents that normally would not even be able to develop their potentials. But when you give them the power of filmmaking, you can and really uncover things. Um, I made this film for two reasons. One, to put Dambi, the spot of Dambi, to be able to expose it to like a bigger um, audience, more than the North, because it's big in the North, but outside the North, people don't really care about it, even in Nigeria, not to talk of outside Nigeria. Yeah. So, um, so what I did was to intentionally marry storytelling with the sports, because if I had made this very heavy sports film, people would disconnect. People don't like to watch boxing films, for example. So mm. I made sure it was drama. Nigerians love drama. So I gave them drama. I gave them love. I gave them a very nice looking um, young chap called um, Abdul Zadal, lovely guy. <laughs> and, um, but one of the things that I really learned again is that there's a lot of stories in Nigeria. We just need to open our minds. I'm Yoruba, um, and Hausa is not my language. Um, but being open to like embrace culture, and I made sure I worked with a lot of outside people also, so I didn't want to misrepresent them, mm. and that's why I also filmed with some of them. Um, for the fighting um, scenes, I made sure some uh, Dambi fighters were there, and I really wanted them to be the ones to tell us, you know, this is how we do it. So I didn't do a lot of things outside um, what they did, because I didn't want to misrepresent them also, kept it authentic, but also made sure I married storytelling. And I just want to say, like, thank you to the guys there. They were very warm. Um, if there's one thing also that I hope the film would do is to, you know, I feel like Dambi fighters in Nigeria are not supported enough. Okay. These guys go through a lot of, you know, the fight is hectic, a lot of injuries and wounds, but they don't get paid enough okay. at all. Um, people come there to watch stuff. Um, but I feel like the fighters themselves are not getting paid enough for the spots that they put their blood and sweat into. Okay. So, which is one of the things that I try to push in the film also. Okay. Um, and also to just show that these people are human, they have things that they are chasing. They're everybody like us, they're just us then, you know? Mm. They're, like, they're like you. And if people can watch wrestling and boxing on a big stage, then why not get a damn bay? Exactly, yeah. Uh, so that's why Fla I made the Fla film. would you want to tell, you will come and tell my story you now. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because, you know, um, he's talking about the warmth of the northern Nigerians, yeah? Um, I served in the north, and I, I, I met my wife in the north. And it t turns out that my wife is half Kenyan. So today I have the Kenyan on the program and the Nigerian who's, who, who, who's working on this northern <laughs> thing. You people come and tell my story so that maybe I'll, maybe I'll make yeah. more money tile. <laughs> We need to find a human what, what, angle what, what to your story. What spot do you play so that we, we engage Tayo? Yeah, what, what, what spot do you play? play? Um, see, more, more, more I think should be, what do you want to do with <laughs> the stories of Western Nigeria? From, for, are you only into Dambe? Are you thinking of doing maybe in the future stories about, you know, um, stars like um, Rashidi Yakini, um, um, yeah. uh, Shabno Adagba, I mean, you know, people like from the western part of Nigeria that, that um, were icons in, in this, icons yeah. of the game, of their games in this country for, for, they have been for decades because they still are. Yeah, so for me personally, I'm drawn to human stories that have like some sense of, you know, actuality, like things that happened. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do a lot of fictional stories that are just because I feel like there's a lot of people's stories that need to be told. For example, Serena Williams, um, King Richard, these are sports films. 
yeah. but the way they are delivered, they don't make you feel like it's a sport film because yeah. there's always that drama. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm very big. There's something I'm working on for next year. Um, it's it's a story around. It's not necessarily. I don't dance is a sport, yeah, because I'm making a dance film next year. Yeah. And because um, I also realized that dancers in Nigeria are not represented properly, so I'm also marrying that to the. Um, I'm probably not going to say a lot of it, uh, a lot of information now, but I'm very particular about telling stories that you know look at a specific field, and it's not necessarily all the glam, glamorous stories. It's not the stories of yeah. some rich girls in Lagos Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more of real people doing real stuff that everybody else just walks past. For example, there's um the BMX guys. Um, there's a story I want to tell about the guys. That have been doing BMX in Lagos. Yeah. I've seen what Red Bull has done for them, and they have to be Red Bull coming in to like put these guys on the map to even build a ramp in Lagos. Yeah. Uh, nobody has told the story about these BMX guys. They have their also. They go out every day. People see them. I have friends that skate on the streets of Lagos. People see them as miscreants. Yeah. But that's a sport. These guys enjoy the sport. And on the international ground, people are doing these things and getting yeah. like international recognition. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I was going to go, go to Florence because of what you have just said, you know. And, you know, uh, Florence, you know, the, Ke the Kenya International uh, Sports Film Festival offers the filmmaker what exactly, yeah? You have a platform to, to, to showcase what you have done in the movie industry. What else? I mean, is it like you have winners and do the winners have grants or something like that? So what happens is that, like I mentioned, that we have partnered with the International um, Olympic Committee. They have a platform that is called FITS, F-I-C-T-S, okay. and that is based in Italy. And what happens, we, the, our winners from our, 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 um, from our festival, we enter these winners into that um that that platform okay. for them to get international recognition okay so we travel we travel okay. so basically we are giving our producers exposure which is very important our platform all the entire team has done this pro bono yeah so that's new that's one thing we want everyone to understand yeah so that was the way we'd be able to identify the passion that we have on our team oh okay. so yeah, that was important. So like now when I listen and I watch something that Teo has produced, I am confident to say it can go. Let it travel from our platform. We recommend this film. Because okay. the only way his story will, will, will work, it has to travel. Okay. And I really would encourage Teo to also enter the, your film into various different festivals. Without fear, just go. And you'll be surprised that it will come back. Because that story is amazing. That's very high praise. That's, that's very high praise. And, and then we're going to take a, sh a short break. Yeah, I can see Tayo um, enjoying the, the accolades. But we're going to take a short break. It's deserved. You worked hard for it and it's good. From the trailer that I saw, I think um, it's something that everybody should look out, uh, look out for. We're going to go on the short break. And when we return, the business continues. You're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Um, you're watching Plus TV Africa, and we're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. My name again is Orufo Ezaga, and today on the program we're talking sports and films. Uh, basically, the, the, the impact that the film industry, storytelling, can br bring to the sports industry. In the studio, uh, sorry, joining me, joining me via Zoom from uh, Kenya is Miss Flor Mrs. Miss Florence. Miss Florence Nduta. <laughs> I am so I am so ashamed of myself, right? But yeah, so it's Miss Florence Nduta that's joining us from Kenya. And and with her is is Ibikunle Ibitayo. Ibitayo. Yes. Yeah. All right. Tayo is the producer of the of the of a movie you must watch. It's called uh, Gidan Dambe. And um, Dambi. yeah, she, he's, it's Dambe is a popular rest, um, sport. Uh, it's boxing and it's mixed art, is it? 
Yeah, it's martial arts. It's boxing. It's um, basically boxing in Alsa. Dambe means boxing in Alsa. Yes. Okay, good. So now back to Florence. Yeah. Now we have the Kenya International uh, Sports Film Festival entering its seventh year. As an African filmmaker, what do you get? That do you get like a special? Um, do you get a special category? Do you get a special grant? Do you get anything that uh, you know supports the young African filmmaker in telling their sports stories? What we have done, we have partnered with the Kenya, uh, Kenya Film F um, Commission. Okay. Um, that is the government body that actually will, that supports us every year so strongly mm. for this festival to travel. However, we encourage, and through them we have encouraged our film producers, local film producers, to change their genres for them to be, for it to be sports oriented films. Mm not just to enter into our festival, but also travel to other sports film festivals across the world. Mm. So we encourage them to do that. Okay, so if I do move... However, okay. yeah. I wanted just to mention this. We also on our, on our festival have got the best feature film Africa award. And then we also have, of course, to encourage ourselves, our Kenyans. Mm. We also have that category for the Kenyans festival. But we have for Africa is very, very important for us mm. because we are telling a story for our stories from our Africa. Stories. So that platform yeah. is there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what? What? Um, what? I'm trying to look for the right um, expression. How much of the film has to be sports? themed for it to be classified a sports, for it to air, for instance, on um, uh, KISFF, you know, how much of it, is it like you do a, a big movie and just three minutes of it is sports related, or it's got to be the, cent the, it has the central to be, theme has, it to, has be sports. to be Sorry, it has to be sports oriented. Mm. That's the best word I can put it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, however, you're telling that story, it yeah. has to be sports Built oriented. Built around sports. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. All right. So, Tayo, when you're doing your movie, yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure this costs a lot of money, you know. And, yes. Yeah. And and in, in Nollywood today, you know, we know the sort of movies that that sell. You know, you do these um, uh, all action. Um, sometimes some juju part of it and all of that. Those are, the movies, those, are the kind, those, those are the movies that sell, yeah? If you tell investors that you want to do a sports-themed movie, you know, I'm sure that you'll be treading on, on, on um, um, the path less traveled, you know? So, and it can be easy, you know, um, um, getting support for, the, for that sort of thing. Did you experience that? You know, how, how did you put this thing all together? Did, did you self-fund yeah. it? Yes, that's, that's actually quite insightful. And as you rightly said, um, making a film in Nigeria is a tough business. You have to really be able to like convince um, investors that you're going to make something that has a track record of selling. Mm. So when I wanted to make Gide Dambe, I knew for sure that I wouldn't get an investor that would believe. And then there's also something I do when it comes to filmmaking. I feel like if you need to change a narrative, you have to put in your work yourself sometimes um, just to show that this can be done. So I self-funded this film. It was out of pocket. Um, uh, spent more money than I anticipated. I remember I was telling somebody I wouldn't spend more than this. I was stubborn. And then I got on set and things changed um, because it was a different terrain and it was expensive because I had to fly in people from different places, from Kano, Cardona, to come in to do the film. Um, I had a lot of people that did stuff for me for almost next to nothing, which was why we were able to make it. Because people, the guys that worked to me on this production really believed in the story too. Um, but to answer your question, no, I didn't get funding. Um, however, it's been interesting because after I made this film and people saw the trailer, I've had conversations where people are like, oh, wow, this is great. You know, this is really good. Uh, but if I didn't make it, nobody would have believed in the script. Mm. Because, exactly. because people, I got feedback from people saying it's niche, it's just, it's a particular region, um, it's not going to really be commercial, you can't sell it, no star power, because I intentionally did not put too many um, A-listers in the film, because again, it was a diff different terrain, and not all of them would be able to like, at least at the time, be able to adapt to the um, it's a rugged environment to film in. That's mm. what I would say. 
So the guys that worked with me were very sold on the dream. And I'm entirely grateful to them, for everyone that worked on the project. Even the um, big shout out to Funky Malam. He's one of the big stars in, in Nollywood. He's from the North. And he also told me, I love this story. Let's do it. The lead actor said the same thing. He said, I love this story. Let's do it. Um, so I feel for if you, if you want to make the change that we're looking for in Hollywood, which is to tell daring stories and bold stories, um, producers have to put their money where their mouth is or their mouth where their money is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. And from, from what yeah. I've seen of the, of, the, of the movie, I'll tell you what would, what would happen. Yeah? I think you're going to gain a lot more international traction for this exactly. movie than local traction. And, and when that happens, I think it's going to be like, you know, um, it's going to go international and then come local and then, you know, uh, um, hit the local market. So like um, Florence is saying, and she's not, she can't, she can't, she's not Nigerian. She can't speak Hausa. Yep. All of the movies Hausa, by the way, is it? it spoke, it's Hausa spoken in uh, all of the movies. Um, yeah, the bulk of it is in Hausa, which is... True to what you said, um, it was intentional. I wanted this film to travel yeah. um, because I really wanted it to like gain international recognition. Yeah. And so when um, this festival picked the movie, I was like, "Yes, we're on the right path." Yeah. Um, I didn't submit it for too many local. And uh, when I say local, I'm not trying to be condescending, but I was intentional about sending it to like international festivals. And I've had like a very good um, feedback so far. Um, people imagine. here love it. It's unique to them, and it, it, it's just like you said. When it makes success out here then it travels back home, which yeah. is the plan. Yeah. Okay, so for almost finally, um, Florence, and I thank you for, for, I thank you for the time that you've given to almost. us. Almost. Uh, almost. Yeah, almost, <laughs> because I know that your, 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 your festival starts in two days. Actually, oh, it starts in two days. I'm traveling first flight out tomorrow yeah. to Mombasa. And, and so, so we're, we're, we're out of here by four in the morning. Yeah, okay, so we're eternally grateful to you for, for the time you're giving us. Okay, so like as Tyra said, he submitted his entry and he was happy that he got chosen. Please, can you take us through the process? If I'm a filmmaker and I have something to show, what do I do? Do I, do I just enter it? How do I enter it? And all of that. If I enter it, does it mean that I'm going to get some sort of recognition? Or there's a vetting process that weeds out some and, and retains some? Okay, so what we do is, first of all, we have a call to entry, which goes on all our social media platforms. We mm. start way up in, I think, is it in May or April? And we are done um, by August so that all the entries have to be in so that we have all the, we are able to start going through the movies. Mm. So we have level one, which is now goes through all, which I went through all 1,490 films. Mm. And trust me, Teo, it can be nerve wracking. Mm. Just to see how hard you can have worked. Mm. And then somebody decides they are joking if you understand what i'm saying yes yes absolutely in, in filmmakers language yeah and I wonder, I know what you, if you woke up and did what you did and somebody else decided uh maybe yeah yeah and yeah. playing around <laughs> they're not serious we had those so oh, wow. level one cleans those movies mm. and then we are left with now the creme de la creme and the creme de la creme was 283 movies out of those mm. that had to be seeked out okay. and given to level two to go through and once they seed that, level three came to the finals, all right? Yeah. And level three hands over me, me their results, of which I will announce the winners next week, Monday. Sorry, Tayo. Oh. So <laughs> you, start, okay. you, you start with one. But it's going to be screened. It's going to be screened. Are we giving people money? No, because yeah. we are, we don't, we, we get funded or support by people. Like this year, we have Ali Alphonse says yeah. in, in Mombasa. Who have hosted us and many other partners that come and just make us not necessarily in, in, uh, they come in, in kind mm. mostly in kind mm. so what we do is use our platform to expose tayo to the world mm. okay. as far as we can take him okay. so you're the head, every time, you're, you're the head juro yes so how am i how am i to then um how, are you supposed to be with tayo on a program like I this. I cannot be with Tayo. You know, because if you win, I cannot win you... this one. I'm not doing tea. I told you. Mm. The tea is mine. <laughs> Grow your own. It's fishing. 
Okay, <laughs> yes, really your own. Your okay, own so, no, I will. I will. I'll, I'll come. I'll, I'll. I'll do mine. I'll come. Tayo, how how do you feel? I can see from your countenance, they are quite happy yeah. with what you have done, and yeah. um, and you know, so you, you're probably feeling a bit confident uh, about what to expect. Um, you, um, so let us know. I mean, what, what are you expecting out of the the festival? I mean, this film took, let me use the convention, how people say it, took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, and again, I think this is not for me, if for anything, because just so you know, we shot this film in 2021. That's when I moved into oh, the UK. Wow. Yeah. Um, because it was intentional for me to make a film that mm. I can travel with. Mm. I wanted to bring a film because I wasn't sure when I would be back to Nigeria. So I made okay. this film as a, as a, you know, my work so that mm. when I move here, I'll be able to show that this is where I am. I'm an African filmmaker. Mm. So, and because I did a lot of the film, it was self funded, I shot it. Um, I had like camera operators helping out. I edited, I did the sound design, I did everything post production. I wrote, directed, um, was DOP. It was a lot of work. So it took me almost two years to, to be able to put it together and say, wow. I'm done with this film. And Did because I'm someone that sometimes I have like the professionalism, so I try to like make sure like it's the best version of the film because people that put their energy into it, they deserve that. Even the actors, even the fighters. So for me, I'm hoping that this film gives them some sort of, I did not forget the film. I didn't abandon the film. I just wanted them to watch it and say, the hard work we put into it in 2021 finally paid off because these guys have moved on to other projects. But they yeah. still really love this project. It's like, when is this film out? So I just really, I'm glad, I'm excited because finally their hard work is, is paying off. It's okay. not necessarily just my own win. It's more of the win of everyone that worked on this project. And I'm so glad that um, a festival like the Kenya um, Festival is really picking a film like this and they, they find it worth it to like, be represented by their festival. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, two questions, two quick questions, right? And <laughs> they might be the final questions to you, right? Um, the first is that um, the first is that the actors that you have that worked on this project, yeah. Do you have you have you done anything about you know bringing them to the to the to the limelight, you know, you know, in terms of publicity for the film? That's number one. Number two, when is the film going to, to uh, air? Is it, when is it going to be released? Sorry. Um, have you, have yeah. you released it anywhere at all? No, I've not released it yet. And that's intentional because, like I said, this film was not made for... It wasn't made for commercial success. Mm. It was made for, to travel, mm. just like um, Unduta said. It was made to travel and to showcase the sports Gide Dambe. So um, I've had a couple of offers to like put it on um, on television, but I'm holding holding off that for now because once it goes goes there, then it's restricted somehow from traveling. Um, mm -hmm. This film right now is traveling and really exposing the actors and the sports to the world. Um, Personally, all the actors are very proud of it. When the trailer came out, there was a lot of buzz and excitement. I got a couple of people from um, the northern side of Nigeria really interested in the film. And everybody's asking me the same question. When is it going to be released? People are telling me to put it on YouTube. I'm like, no, um, we're not doing that. What about, Net <laughs> what about Netflix? Yeah, so I mean, I'm looking for, and that's, that's me saying it out into the world, I'm looking for distributors that might be able to like get us onto Netflix, which is the big picture. We're trying to get onto Netflix. But aside that, I'm also big on self-distribution in terms of like, I'm not going to wait around um, until someone makes the move to help. The same way I didn't wait around to make the film. Um, I'll, I'll be doing some screenings here in the UK, um, in Manchester and in London um, before the end of the year. Okay. Um, I'm going to do some self-hosted screenings also, bring industry leaders and experts that I've worked with uh, from the BBC, just to really expose it. The BBC is interested because they made a documentary about Dambe um, sometimes last year. So they're interested in the screening. So I'm going to be like screening to like an audience that really would be fascinated by this film. Um, Netflix and Amazon Prime, yes, um, that's what we are hoping to jump on at the end of the day. But I just don't want to dump the film on a platform. I want it to travel. Okay. So that's the plan. And um, so, Madam Florence, uh, it's to you that we must um, turn to for the 
final questions. <laughs> You know, um, it's a great thing that you guys are doing with ASIF and, and, but what about the stories told from other countries, other continents, you know, um, mm -hmm. what sort of, why does the man in France or the man in China come to, to Kenya, to the Kenyan um, Sports Film Festival? To, to, to showcase his movies and not maybe the bigger um, sports film festivals in the world. It's because for the same thing Tayo has said, they want their movies to travel. Mm. So the minute like you, you win, you definitely get that accolade which you mm. put on, on your film mm. that you were actually won at the Kenya International Sports Film Festival. Mm. So once you get enough of those, then people already know that yes, this is something worth watching. Mm. So yeah. it, that's the benefit that we do with that. Yeah. Okay, so cool. even from all over the world, Argentina, um, France, of course, our hosts, um, everywhere, the UK, we have so many films, so many. Okay. And they travel, they come to Africa to travel. I Just mean, so. I like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and that's, that's been, been, uh, the show, um, lady and gentleman. Um, maybe, maybe just one last question for Tayo. Did you have a movie making background before you embarked, uh, on this Dambe film? Yes, I've been making movies for the past eight years. Um, I'm a cinematographer, okay. I'm a professional cinematographer and colorist. I've done some work in Nigeria. I've filmed stuff for African Magic. I've also worked on some short films and movies that made it to the theater and the cinema. So, uh, but Gila Dambe was my own pocket. It was yeah. me not working for someone at this point and shooting their stories. It was me. Um, there's another film I made in, in uh, Obudu was about child marriage for a friend. Awesome film. It'll be out soon. I'm just plugging that in. But yes, I'm a cinematographer by profession, and that's what I do. I make, I shoot documentaries and films. Um, so I decided to put my skills into the test and my money uh, where my mouth is to make it a damn bit. And, and I'm so proud of it. It looks like you've done a wonderful job. You know, so, yes. Flores, it's to yeah, you. Can I say one thing? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you the last word. I was just going to say Oh, that. fantastic. <laughs> Guys, whoever is watching, the festival will be hybrid, meaning that we'll be live streaming mm. for the four, four days from the 17th of October through to the 20th of October. We'll have screening, we'll have panel discussions on mm. various things. It's not just the sports. You need to know what happens behind the sports. Mm. We'll be talking about sports arbitration. We'll be talking about doping. We'll be talking about um, administration, management, so many other topics that you my own viewers really, really need to understand. It is not just seeing at the end, you need to show how we got there. We will have some para-Olympians on my panel. So, so that would be very interesting that will be on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Kenyan time. Okay, I wish you all of the best. What you're doing is brilliant and um, providing a platform for the likes of Tyre and so many other you know, young Africans who, who want to tell their stories. Maybe someday, yes. if old people are allowed to tell stories, maybe I'll join you guys and tell, my, tell stories that are dear to me because I think that, that, that there are thousands of African stories to tell. All right? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for making time out to join us. Thank you, Tayo. And I wish Thank you, you all much. the best. Thank you. Appreciate it. On that note, um, join me again next Tuesday for another edition of Sports Business with Oru4 Ezaga. I hope you had a great time today listening to this insightful discussion with, um, with Florence and Tayo. And um, there you go. Movie making, storytelling is, is, is what drives sport business around the world. It's not just about the game on the pitch. Off the pitch, you can tell amazing stories that enchant audi audiences and make them want to be part of the football industry that you're building. Until we meet again next week. Uh, this is me, Rufo Izaga, saying uh, be productive, be good, and stay safe. <laughs>